Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having themselves a great day. Another Goddard goodie, a Neville nugget for sure. Creation is finished. Got it already. We're done. In fact, just right here, at the end of the video, we have it already. All right, you're, you're done. You don't need to watch anything else. But for those of you that do, Neville Goddard actually explains this beautifully. Got about five, six, seven paragraphs out of this particular chapter, just to keep it a little more readable. And also to really help hit home the points of what Goddard's saying. And this is really Blake kind of working through them. And one of the big key moments in any one of our lives, when it comes to manifesting, when it comes to spiritual living, when it comes to interacting with the physical world, the second each and every one of us realizes that it is our world to create, that our experiences are related to what's going on inside ourselves, truly. This isn't just some airy-fairy fantasy. This is a reality that a lot of us, when we pay enough attention to what's going on, to the thoughts that led up to it, when we finally realize, oh my gosh, I actually do interact with my life. At that point, it's no longer a question. It's no longer one of those things where, well, how do I help my faith? How do I... You, you already believe. There's no not believing. Belief comes from noticing the causation to what happens in reality. When we're able to start to connect those dots, sometimes it may not be real easy. I'll give you that. Sometimes it may take a little bit more of a meditation approach or maybe even working with our subconscious to try to help us understand. But oftentimes, when you look back on it, you're like, oh, I was, I was thinking about that yesterday. I spent a little time, I was thinking about how blah, blah, blah could happen. And then next day, there it is. We have a lot more to do with happens to our world than I think a lot of us realize. So this was the big, big point in uh, the chapter here. It's called Creation is Finished. It's out of Awakened Imagination and the Search. Blake saw all possible human situations as already made states. He saw every aspect, every plot and drama as already worked out as mere possibilities as long as we were not in them, but as overpowering realities when we were in them. He described these states as sculptures of losses halls. I'm assuming, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. Distinguish, therefore, states from individuals in those states. States change, but individual identities never change nor cease. The imagination is not a state, said Blake. It is a human existence itself. Affection or love become a state when divided from imagination. The human experience itself is imagination. It's kind of that whole Descartes, right? I think, therefore, I am, or assuming it was him. That whole concept of our imagination, our focus, what we put attention on, that is really what living is. The subconscious and all these things are kind of like the body just come, comes along with the soul part of us, the part of ourselves that's actually doing everything, the God part of ourselves, the part made in his image and likeness, the part that's actually interesting. That's what Blake's talking about. He also goes on to say, One day I quietly slipped from my apartment. This is uh, Goddard giving an example of where this really hit home with him, where he really realized that what he experiences in the outer world, what he experiences is completely based upon his imagination. That his imagination is actually creating the experiences that he's having. So here's where he... And he had a hard time with sharing this. He kind of led up to it a little bit prior in that it was like I had such a hard time sharing this with people because it was such a weird thing and weird conclusions that he came to. Now, granted, this probably happened to him in the 40s or 50s, and he probably wrote about it around the 60s. So from that standpoint, yeah, this was kind of a weird thing to talk about. Nowadays, meh, maybe not so much. One day, I quietly slipped from my apartment in New York City into some remote yesteryear's countryside. As I entered the dining room of a large inn, I became fully conscious. I knew that my physical body was immobilized on my bed back in New York, yet here I was an awake and as conscious as I have ever been. I intuitively knew that if I could stop the activity of my mind, everything before me would freeze. No sooner was the thought born than the urge to try it possessed me. I felt my head tighten, then thicken to a stillness. My attention concentrated into a crystal clear focus, and the waitress walking walked not. And I looked through the window, and the leaves falling fell not. And the family of four eating ate not. And they lifting the food lifted it not. 
Then my attention relaxed, the tightness eased, and of a sudden all moved onward in their course. The leaves fell, the waitress walked, and the family ate. Then I understood Blake's vision of the sculptures of the Losses Halls. He realized that he was able to control this experience. Essentially, he was out of his body, experiencing something. But when he realized that he could hit the pause button on the reality that he was witnessing or experiencing, and then turn it back on at his desire by his mind, by his imagination, by ceasing it with his imagination and then turning it back on with his imagination, his experience followed suit. Think of the world as containing an infinite number of states of consciousness from which it could be viewed. Think of these states as rooms or mansions in the house of God, and like the rooms of any house, they are fixed relative to one another. But think of yourself, the real self, the imaginative you, as the living, moving occupant of God's house. Each room contains some of Laos's sculptures, with infinite plots and dramas and situations already worked out but not activated. They are activated as soon as human imagination enters and fuses with them. Each represents certain mental and emotional activities. To enter a state, man must consent to the ideas and feelings which it represents. These states represent an infinite number of possible mental transformations which man can experience. To move into another state or mansion necessitates a change of beliefs. Let's say that again. To move into another state or mansion necessitates a change of beliefs. Really quickly, where we are right now, right now, the way our world is right now, you look outside, you look out in your bedroom, you look wherever, you look out of your own eyes, the world is a reflection of what you are right now internally. If you don't like what you're seeing in the external world, the only way to change it is internally. Again, Blake's message was the imagination creates our experience. Everything we experience, everything that we connect with is connected to us by us because of us. Because of what's happening inside of us, we are experiencing this. All that you could ever desire is already pre present and only waits to be matched by your beliefs, but it must be matched. For that is the necessary condition by which alone it can be activated and objectified. Matching the beliefs of a state is the seeking that finds, the knocking to which it is opened, the asking that receives. Go in and possess the land. The moment man matches the beliefs of any state, he fuses with it. And this union results in the activation and project projection of its plots, plans, dramas, and situations. It becomes the individual's home from which he views the world. It is his workshop, and, if he is observant, he will see outer reality shaping itself upon the model of his imagination. One of the things that's really cool, we've still got some more Goddard, I'm not done here. One of the things that's really cool when we realize that we control the outer world, when we start to see things happening in our world that seem odd, for example... I consider myself a very fortuitous person, very fortunate. A lot of wonderful things happen to me. I'm always in the greatest of timings, and green lights just flow in my life. Like, literally, when I drive, I see an abnormal number of green lights to probably what most people experience. And it's because I'm always in the flow. I'm always in God's timing. Now, if you listen to the statements I just made, this wasn't so much just a mantra or a prayer that I say. This is actually a belief I have. It's actually my understanding of how the world works right, wrong, or indifferent. It's my belief. And so because of it, I experience a large number of green lights, and I experience all these great things of perfect timing. It's pretty awesome. Sometimes, though, I notice in my life that I'm hitting a lot of red lights. I'm oddly getting weird timing, and I'm kind of not in sync. And it's these moments where I realize, dude, inside, you're not in sync. What's going on in your life? Why are you out of sync? What are you out of balance in? What crazy thoughts are you having right now that aren't in line with your outer world or aren't in line with what you would like your outer world to be? The change comes from within. The belief that we hold is the experience we have. 
Your belief could be a number of things. You might have any number of different beliefs and go through the green light thing. You might consider yourself lucky because you're a lucky person and you always have lucky things. You might just be like, oh my gosh, I've hit so many green lights. That's crazy. That never happens to me. Could be your belief. You might be of the belief where, oh, well, figures. That happens to me all the time. <laughs> Here's another one I'm going to go through. It just turned yellow right when I got there. Right? There's different ways that you can believe what's going on around you they might manifest the same experience. So I could believe all three of those different beliefs and still go through green lights like any other person. It's the same reality. My belief created it, but three different houses or mansions, if you will, are having this green light experience. All of us choose what we are going to experience and the reality around us, and all of us choose how we're going to experience the reality around us. It's our reality to choose. Become a drinker and an eater of the ideals you wish to realize. Have a set, definite aim or your mind will wander. And wandering, it eats every negative suggestion. If you live right mentally, everything else will be right. By a change of mental diet, you can alter the course of observed events. But unless there is a change of mental diet, your personal history remains the same. You illuminate or darken your life by the ideas to which you consent. Nothing is more important to you than the ideas of which you feed. And you feed on the ideas from which you think. If you find the world unchanged, it is a sure sign that you are wanting infidelity to the new mental diet which you neglect in order to condemn your environment. You are in need of a new and sustained attitude. You can be anything you please if you will make the conceptual habitual. For any idea which excludes all others from the field of attention discharges an action. The idea and moods to which you constantly return define the state with which you are fused. Therefore, train yourself to occupy more frequently the feeling of your wish fulfilled. This is a creative magic. It is a way to work towards fusion with the desired state. Now, one of the things to kind of use the example I've been using with the green lights and my beliefs, it's easier to come from, for some people that don't necessarily have the solid belief in realizing that what happens in their outer world is because of their inner world. So for people that aren't necessarily coming at it, but wanting to believe like myself, oh, I get green lights all the time. What they often will do, and this is where we fail, is when the red lights start to happen, we then internalize it and say, I must be doing something wrong. I must be failing. Why is this happening? I'm not doing right. I'm why am I just screwing up? I, what, is, what am I not doing anymore? We lose sight of the fact that, no, this is just a simple, what's going on inside of me? Why am I out of sync? And once you establish that and fix that, your outer reality changes. But what a lot of us do is we look at the outer reality and decide it's real. And it's not. It's a reflection of the inner reality. So I know it may seem very similar, but a lot of us react to the outer reality. Oh, no, it's not good. This happened. But when I see, oh, wow, it's strange. I'm hitting some of these red lights. I immediately look inside and go, oh, okay, yeah, I've been a little struggled with this thought or been mental diet f argument with this person. I need to stop that. Or right, I, I see that there are tie-ins internally to what I'm experiencing externally rather than reacting to the external as much as seeing it as a reflection of the internal and going, oh, I'm looking in the mirror and I see a pimple, right? It's that. I, I know I'm, I'm not quite touching it the way I want to. I so desperately want to explain this better. If you would assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled more frequently, you would be a master of your fate. But unfortunately, you shut out your assumptions for all but the occasional hour. Again, so many of us just do the technique and then all day long our mental diet sucks. Practice making real to yourself the feeling of the wish fulfilled. After you have assumed the feeling of the wish fulfilled, do not close the experience as you would a book, but carry it around like a fragrant odor. Instead of being completely forgotten, let it remain in the atmosphere communicating its influence automatically to your actions and reactions. A mood, often repeated, gains a momentum that is hard to break or check, so be careful of the feelings you entertain. Habitual moods reveal the state which you are fused. So maybe to try to wrap in what I was saying earlier and maybe make more sense of it, it's the fact that when we see the outer world differently than we want it and we have a reaction to that, we get frustrated, we have an emotional response, it's that component 
that is dangerous versus seeing things happen in the outer world and realizing, oh, okay, this is just demonstrating that I'm a little out of balance right now. Not bad, not good, nothing. Just need to look at the imbalance, look inward and see what's going on, alter that, and then everything's cool. And what that does is that creates a different feeling, a little more of a glass half full kind of feeling, a little more of a, I'm doing everything all right, I'm in control. This is my life to manifest. Not that I am uh, uh, on a ride or or I am a, a companion or I'm a partner on, no, it's mine. It's my creation. This is my movie. If I don't like it, then let's fix it in editing. I got this and let's revise the situation and make it better. It is always possible to pass from thinking of the end you desire to realize to thinking from the end. But the crucial matter is thinking from the end. For thinking from means unification or fusion with the idea. Whereas thinking of the end, there is always subject and object. The thinking individual and the thing thought. You must imagine yourself into the state of your wish fulfilled, in your love for that state, and in so doing, live and think from it and no more of it. You pass from thinking of to thinking from by centering your imagination in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. The difference is realizing when you have it, when you're in possession of the thing you desire, you're now thinking from it. When you think of it, when it's this external object, when it's this thing I'd like to have, when it's this thing that's over there, when it's this thing that's in someone else's hands, when it's this thing that's in someone else's house, when it's this thing that I haven't bought yet because I can't afford it, when it's this other thing, it's not us. We're thinking of it at that point. You can't manifest of something. You can't manifest a thing that's not you. You can only manifest what's you. You have to be from it. You have to have it in your possession and feel what that would feel like. Then you're from it. Then you're living in the end. Then you're a part of your manifestation. And from that place, your mind, your connection, your internal mechanisms can see themselves with this object, can then importantly feel what it's like to have this object. And then as we talk about, your subconscious runs off and makes it so. And it's an issue of keeping your mental diet in line, keeping that mental conversation going, making sure my conscious thoughts, discussions, mental diets, conversations in my mind are in alignment with what my desire is. If my desire is to be with a certain person and I keep having arguments in my mind with that certain person, we're not in alignment and we're going to have problems. I need to get this worked out. I need to forgive. I need to let go, whatever the case is. But if I'm doing something that's out of alignment, I'm going to feel weird about it. You're going to feel depressed. You're going to feel icky. You're going to feel it's not working. You're going to have these more negative feelings. That's an indication that you're out of alignment. Get your mental diet, get your thoughts, get the conversations, the arguments in your head. You need to get those under control. You need to understand why they're happening. You need to forgive and forget and move on or, or do Ho'oponopono or whatever. Revise whatever works for you. You need to do something to change it. You can't just leave it as it is and then hope it just gets better all on its own. So trying to get you to see things as they are. And when you are in alignment, you'll feel it as well. It'll feel good. You'll feel like you're doing what's right. You feel on top of the world. You feel like you're on cloud nine. You feel like you're walking on clouds everywhere you go. You have this feeling that you're in sync. That's how you know. So your feelings are going to guide you. And if you're a little out of sync, look inside. Get it straightened out. You're out of alignment probably. Most likely out of alignment with your inner dialogue. Your beliefs are hopefully okay with what you're trying to manifest, but maybe that's the problem too. Maybe you don't believe it's possible and we need to work on that as well. Again, there's a couple different ways to come at it. There's videos to cover these different angles. Figuring out where we're at and why we fail or figuring it out and why we succeed is super important in our personal manifesting evolution. As we learn this, as we get better at this, as we learn ourselves, we will know what is going on. We will know why things are falling out of line. We will just know. We'll feel it. We'll know. Things will be out of sync. And you'll be able to address it much, much sooner than we often do now where we have to wait until something blows up before we finally look at what's going on. This is a great, great 
message that God is sharing with us. We own our realities. When we truly, truly understand that, our life changes forever, forever. And it never, ever can be different again because you now realize you are the owner of your own dreams. It's your key. It's your lock. You made it all. It's up to you. Dan Radio Style.